I must thank you for all of your kindness to my poor sister Lydia, for taking so much trouble to discover her and Wickham. Ever since I have known it, I have been most anxious to acknowledge to you how grateful I feel. Were it known to the rest of my family, I should not have any my own gratitude to express. If you will, thank me. Let it be for yourself alone. Much as I respect your family, I thought of only giving you happiness. If your feelings are still as they were before, tell me so at once. My affections and wishes are unchanged, but one word from you will silence me on this subject forever. <clears throat> My sentiments have undergone a material change. Miss Bennett, the recollection of what I have said to you in the past, of my conduct and my manners, have been inexpressibly painful to me for many months. I am sure you then thought me devoid of feeling. I shall never forget when you said that I could not have addressed you in any possible way that would induce you to accept me. Do not repeat what I said then. I have long been most heartily ashamed of it. All my former prejudices have been removed. I cannot forget my behavior. I have been a selfish being all my life. As a child, I was taught what was right, but I was not taught to correct my temper. I was spoiled by my parents, which encouraged me to think merely of all the rest of the world. I might still have been like this, but for you, dearest, loveliest Elizabeth, by you, I was humbled. You showed me how insufficient were all my pretensions to please a woman worthy of being pleased. What will you think to my vanity? I believed you to be expecting and wishing my addresses. Oh, you must have hated me after all that I have said. <laughs> I was angry perhaps at first. I'm almost afraid of asking what you thought of me when we met at Pemberley. I was surprised. Your surprise could not have been greater than mine in being noticed by you. My object then was to obtain, <coughs> by every civility in my power, your forgiveness, and to lessen your ill opinion. And what of Jane and Mr. Bingley? You have given your permission. Before going to London, I told him of all my former interference in his affairs. Absurd and impertinent. His surprise was great. He had not had the slightest suspicion. I told him, moreover, that I believed myself mistaken in supposing, as I had done, that your sister was indifferent to him. And as I could easily perceive that his attachment to her was unabated, I felt no doubt of their happiness together. I am now convinced of her affection. And your assurance of it, I suppose, carried immediate conviction to him. It did. I could not conceal that I had known your sister to be in town last winter, but I had known it and purposely kept it from him. He was angry, but I trust he has forgiven me now. How did you ever fall in love with me? I cannot fix on the hour, the spot, the look, or the words. My behavior to you has always bordered on the uncivil. Be sincere. Did you admire me for my impertinence? For the liveliness of your mind, I did. You may as well call it impertinence. The fact is that you were sick of civility, of deference, of officious attention. I interested you because I was so unlike other women. There, I have saved you the trouble of accounting for it. Why did you always look as if you did not care about me? Because you were grave and silent and gave me no encouragement. I was embarrassed. So was I. Oh, <laughs> I have the courage to announce this to Lady Catherine. I am more likely to want time than courage, but it shall be done directly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing out here? I have been walking with Mr. Darcy. <coughs> Mr. Darcy? Oh. Jane, he loves me. We are to be married. Engaged to Mr. Darcy. 
No. You're joking, Lizzie. You shall not deceive me. I know it to be impossible. I speak nothing but the truth. He still loves me. We are engaged. But Lizzie, I know how much you dislike him. Well, that is all to be forgot. <laughs> dear, dear Lizzie, I would, I do congratulate you, but are you certain that you can be happy with him? It is settled between us that we are to be the happiest couple in the world. I've just seen that most disagreeable Mr. Darcy in the world. <laughs> what do you mean by being so tiresome as to always be coming here? Lizzie! Are you out of your senses? Have you not always hated him? Father, I am most attached to him. In other words, you are determined to have him. He is rich, to be sure, and you may have more fine clothes and carriages than Jane, but will they make you happy? Have you any other objection? None. I have given him my consent. He is the sort of man, indeed, to whom I can never dare refuse anything. But let me advise you to think better of it. I know you, Lizzie. I know you could not be happy unless you truly esteemed your husband. We all know him to be a proud, unpleasant kind of man. But that would be nothing if you really liked him. I do like him, Father. I love him. Of whom do you speak? <laughs> of your daughter's fiancé, Mr. Darcy. If this is the case, he deserves you. I could not have parted with you, my Lizzie, to anyone less worthy. If any young men come for Mary, do send them in, <laughs> for I find myself quite at leisure. Mr. Darcy, who'd have thought it? <laughs> oh, my sweetest Lizzie, I am so happy. How rich you will be. Oh, oh, my dearest child, pray apologise for me not having liked him before. I hope he will overlook it. Three daughters married. Oh, how I admire all my three sons-in-law highly. Wickham is perhaps my favourite, but I'm sure I like your husband just as well as James. Are you pleased, Jane? Very, very much. But do you really love him enough? Do anything rather than marry without affection. I must confess that I love Mr. Darcy rather more than I do Mr. Bingley. I'm afraid you will be angry. <laughs> be serious. How long have you loved him? It has been coming on so gradually that I hardly know when it began. But I believe I must date it from my first seeing his beautiful grounds at Pemberley. <laughs> be serious. Jane, I can assure you of my most deep attachment to Mr. Darcy. Then I am happy, for you will be as happy as myself. As Bingley's friend and your husband, there can be only Bingley and yourself more dear to me. And I may rejoice that Mr. Bingley has bought an estate close to Pemberley. We shall be within 30 miles of each other. Then there is nothing that could make me happier. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 